Of all the many waters I've fished in my career, the one I get the most questions about is Orchid Lake in Oxfordshire. I first fished this historic day ticket water in 1990 when it was run by Dorchester Fisheries. I did my work experience down here and I've gone on to share many great memories of the water. Today it's run by Marsh Prattley and is home to over 50 from 30 pounders. It's known as the home of the 30s and this month I want to give you an insight into this famous water during a three day session in late May. I'm going to talk you through my approach, some of my favourite swims and its famous residents and give prospective visitors an idea on how to tackle it. Cool, it's good to be back down this place, it's been a while. I think the last trip I did was February last year for DNA baits and I managed to catch one fish but the lake is looking a lot different to them because it's nice and green now, it's nice and um, mild as well, the air temperature at the moment is about 18 degrees so it's going to be perfect for not just bottom bait fishing but also some surface fishing because this lake it responds really well to both methods and the swim that I've gone in is probably my favourite one on the lake it's known as the Alamo and the reason it's my favourite is because it gives you loads of scope, there's loads of water out there for you, it's actually a double swim but I'm here today just on my own but out there are loads and loads of features. There's loads of bars, there's weed, there's silt, clear areas, and there's gonna be a few carp as well. So I know for sure I'm not gonna be a million miles away from any fish, but uh, it's definitely looking good. So I'm gonna get the bivvy set up, and then I'll talk you through my approach to fishing this evening. Although clear areas on lakes do change from season to season depending on the weather conditions and who's been fishing there and stock etc, you know if there's a lot of bream in the water then if they've been feeding in a particular area then you do tend to get um, a lot of areas cleaned out but uh, over the years the two main clear areas that I've known about in this swim have always been in line with the clock tower or it used to be a fire station, I think, at one time, but people do call it the clock tower in the distance there. At about 20 wraps, there's a lovely clear area there. That's an area that I fished last winter, and it's also an area that I fished over the last 20 years on and off. And uh, the other particular area, which I'm gonna have to cast out and try and find it again, is down here to the left. In the distance, there used to be some, some tall poplar trees over here, but, uh, my fingers going in the wrong direction, but um, Marsh has cut them down over the last few weeks, so um, I'm gonna have to try and find that one again. But uh, there used to be a really long clear area out there as well where we used to catch a lot of fish from. So they're the two areas that I'm gonna fish. And with my third rod, I'm probably just gonna stick it down this reed line. It is quite shallow down this reed line, only a couple of feet, but uh, the fish do come in close along there, certainly when it's nice and warm like today. So I've got the marker float all rigged up. It's now a case of just casting it out and seeing if I can find the areas that historically have done me a few bites in the past. One of the tactics that's been used quite a lot in Orchid over the years is bait boats and uh, I brought mine with me today. It's uh, a bit of an old boat this one because I've not been using bait boats over the last couple of years because the waters I've been fishing don't allow them but uh, this particular boat it's seen Probably better days but it's still going strong it's a proper workhorse of a boat it's an old blue sky angling pocket rocket and uh, I'm not sure if they still make these but I'm sure it's still gonna work today but um, one of the things I always do when I'm, I'm using a bait boat is I always carry a marker float with me as well because there's a bit of weed about at Orchid there always has been and I know roughly where the clear areas are but although my echo sounder is pretty accurate I do like to chuck the marker float out there have a good feel about and see if uh, below the boat or where I'm going to be fishing is going to be clear. So I've got my marker rod with me as well and I've got it rigged up perfectly for, for weed fishing. Um, it's just a standard avid spod rod that is with a reel and some braid on it and um, the interesting bit that I've put up here now is just to talk you through the marker float setup because uh, let me just pull that, give yourself a bit of line. Um, because there's a lot of weed out there, or bits and pieces on the bottom anyway, there's certainly a lot of bottom algae, then if you just chucked a marker float out there and pulled it back, the chances are it's probably not going to pop up. So what I've done here is I've set up uh, my marker float with about a foot of extension on the lead. So the actual float itself, when you cast it out, is, is sitting about a foot above the lead. And that just keeps this particular area here, which is where I'm going to let the line out, that keeps that well away from any weed so it doesn't block up and you're always guaranteed to get the marker float to pop up. So basically, I've got a swivel on the line that's free moving there. 
I've got a couple of rubber stoppers and then they've got the marker float on the end and this is one of the Avid marker floats which is there, plug time. Um, these are great marker floats, really like them. Not just because they get paid by the company but they actually are very good. You can actually buy them as a set and they come complete with the lead as well but I've not got one to show you so check those out on the website. But it's really easy to use and when I cast it out I let the line out. If it's five foot of line that I've let out I know that it's roughly about six foot because as I say I've got this tail on the lead there and, and it works perfectly so what I'm going to do is cast it out there try and find some clear areas and then hopefully put some bait out um, very close to where they are. There you go that's what I've pulled in loads of Canadian pond weed and there's likely to be quite a lot of that out there at the moment but I do know that in between the beds of this there's going to be some lovely clear areas as well and they're the areas that I'm going to try and search out and that's when I'm going to present the bait. So I'm almost ready to put the first rod out and there in the boat is the rig already in place and then I've got an 18 mm SLK wafter on the end of that and all I'm going to do is put a base layer of 18 mm SLK and some 8 mm SLK. I'm going to load that up and then I'm going to send it out but as you can see at the moment there is a little bit of a ripple on the surface and because I've got braid on this marker rod here that braid has slightly drifted to the right. Now you can probably just see me marker floating shot which is out there if I can just zoom in. Now between the rod tip and where the marker float is the braid has drifted to the right so I've got to make sure that I send the bait boat to the left of the marker float or well, that braid is just going to tangle in the prop. I'm talking from experience here because I've done it loads of times so uh, that's definitely a little tip for you. Always send your bait boat out to the opposite side of where the wind's blowing. Right, so let's get loaded up and get things sorted. If that boy over there will let me. That's the resident orchid swan and he hates anything on his lake, including bait boats. Let's hope he doesn't destroy mine, but he's definitely destroyed a few over the years. Here comes the swan. <laughs> like clockwork, look at him. He's faster than Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> Does it all the time. He normally swims right next to the boat and occasionally if you go too close to him, he just whacks it. So I'm gonna try and avoid that as much as I can. Yeah, he definitely hates bait boats. So a little bit of advice, if you spend a fortune on a bait boat, don't take it too close to him because he does every now and again get his wings out and smack them. Oh, we got that one out okay. So I've got the boat back and uh, now I'm just going to set the rod and obviously with this much weed about I'm going to be uh, tight lining. Something I do an awful lot of as you've probably seen in my videos. I want to know as soon as that fish picks up the lead that will be contact. Uh, there we go, sorted, that's the first rod. Next rod out. Nice old dark one that one is. There's the 
this one up, mate. This okay. Lovely. Lovely old fish, this one. And it's a male. I can see the tiny little spawning tubercles on it, so no wonder it fought really hard, but what an awesome fish. Fantastic way to get off the mark. A lovely orchid 31 pounder. I think this one's known as Oscar. And I don't know what it looks like behind the camera, but from here it just looks black. Mega fish. Awesome. Here's the other side of it. Really long fish this one is. There you go. Brilliant start. First night, 30 pounder. Not too bad. I said at the beginning of the film that this uh, swim is a double swim and you also get this like little cabin and over the years it's seen a lot of carp anglers and you can see some of the drawings and what have you on the walls. can't uh, show you all of it because it's a little bit rude, some of it is, but yeah, some lovely drawings and obviously lots of nice memories of people sharing catches and what have you. There you go, look at that. Somebody's caught a 21, a 21, a 22, a 32. Loads of drawings and memories. Yeah, when it comes to day ticket waters, this place has definitely got a lot of history. Orchid's been on the scene for, well, 30 odd years, probably more than that. It's got some lovely old carp in it, all homegrown. And yeah, great venue. I love it, it's certainly one of my favourite places to fish in the UK and there aren't many places on the day ticket where you can catch a £30 carp like you've got here. There must be 50, 60 of them swimming around somewhere out there. Let's hope we can get a few tonight. It's hard to say what the main fish are at Orchid because many residents go missing for long periods. Two 40 plus mirrors known as Tomo and Daisy haven't been out for a while, whereas the other 40 known as Delilah has been out quite a few times, mostly around the 38 pound mark. There are quite a lot of fish in the upper 30s bracket, including No Name, JD and Kathy, and some of them are really old, approaching 40 plus years or more. One named BJ after Brian Jarrett was a 30 plus when I did my work experience here in 1990, so that one's quite old. There's new ones coming through all the time, and the latest of these is a stunning mirror known as Morgan's, which is without a doubt one of the best looking day ticket carp in the UK. In she goes. This is one I've wanted for a while, a fish known as Little M, and uh, another 30 pounder. Awesome. They've got a very similar look to them, these orchid fish. The old Isle strain have anyway, and this is definitely one of them. I've seen this one on the Facebook page and website quite a few times. Little M, and always wanted to catch it, so lovely. Beautiful. They're all absolutely banging fish, these orchid carp. What a session. Probably one of the most consistent areas on the lake over the years has been the two swims that's known as middles and new middles. And the reason for that is because they're in the middle of the lake. And what you've got in front of them are three 
long gravel bars that run parallel from one end of the lake to the other and obviously the fish just use them as a, a patrol route as they move from up and down the lake but over the years it's accounted for loads of 30s all, all of the fish in, in orchid have been caught from this area at one time or another and it's not just good in the summer and spring again it's one of those swims that's great all year round and all you've got to do is just fish to the, the clear areas or the gravel areas and you know you just wait for the fish to come along but a perfect area to catch a big one from as well Royal Box is a double swim and it gets its name because you get this great view down the lake where you can see any fish that are moving. You've got the island straight in front as well which is a great feature, you can fish to the one side of that. There's a lovely gravel feature as well just in front of it and obviously you've got the margins at both sides and it's a perfect place to intercept fishes and moving into what's known as the all alone swim. The in between swim is a feature packed swim at this time of the year especially because you've got pads either side of you down here to the right where there's always resident fish you've got a set of lilies to the left as well there's a nice little gravel area about halfway between here and the island and obviously you've got the island as well it's a great swim in the summer months because the fish just love these pads and there's always fish around here And the final swim I'm going to talk about is Chris's Bar, and this is a great early season swim. It's quite shallow out in front, there's a few gravelly areas out there, and it's obviously named because there's a bar out in front, and the fish are always in here, even in the winter time, because they come into the area where there's a lot of weed about, they hide away in the weed, and you can pick them off from really close quarters as well, so it's a lovely swim all year round. That is how close the fish get. Just uh, got back to the swim after going for a run. I've just seen two fish in real close. You can see the cloud there. I wasn't quick enough to get it on, on camera properly, but yeah, definitely worth putting a, a rod in close if you're in any of the swims. Right, I'm not going to talk you through the rig that I'm using today because it's no different to the type of rigs that I use in all my blogs. But what I will say is that I'm using a lead clip system and the reason I'm using a lead clip system is that I want to get rid of that lead. There's quite a bit of weed out there and that lead, if it stays on that clip or if it stays on the main line, it's going to cause me lots of problems because what happens is you hook the fish, the, the lead's dangling down here, it doesn't matter how much pressure you put on the rod, if the rod's at test curve, it very rarely lifts that lead very high in the water. So if that lead is dangling below where the hook hold is, when the fish gets itself into the weed, it's always going to cause you loads of problems with locking up the fish. So basically, I want to just clip that top rubber onto the lead clip, just nice and gentle, and then when the fish bolts, I get that indication, the lead comes off and I'm in direct contact with the fish, and I've got a much better chance of landing it. Well, there's a sight you don't see very often. I believe that's a red kite. And normally they're quite rare, but at the moment, there's a couple of them near the lake. I've just seen on Facebook as well, look, somebody said there's a couple of mating kites on Bluebell, so we've obviously got a thing about day ticket lakes. God, he's gone beyond there now. There he is. Look at that. That's awesome. What a bird. So I've got a fish weeded up and instead of just yanking and yanking and then eventually pulling for a break what I'm going to do is just put the rod in the rest and just take some of the tension off the line and let the fish make its own way out the weed. Once this line starts to tighten up again then I'm back in contact with the fish but you know trust me it works this method does. I've done it on lots of different waters and indeed on one lake in Yorkshire known as Tylery I actually had a fish weeded up for, for several hours and just took the rod in the rest wait for it to start bleeping again and then we're back in contact with the fish so that's what I'm going to do
loads of line, loads of weed on the line, which is causing me problems. I can't get the head of the fish up. Thirty-two pounds, a fish known as Big Elf, and you're probably thinking that's a long fish, and it probably fought really well, and it did. Absolutely tore my arms off because it just would not stop. I think these fish are very close, or they have just spawned because uh, some of the weights are slightly down, but um, they're also very angry as well. Certainly, the males are like this one. What a mega fish, though and another classic example of an orchid 30 pounder. Brilliant session. God. Awesome. One thing I always do when I'm using a boat is I'll drop the lead on a tight line just so I can feel the donk. So I'm happy with the drop. So I'm just going to tighten the liner by sending the boat forwards. Stop it. There, happy with the spot. Drop it, feed it down, donk. Happy with that. Now I can bring the boat back, set the rod. I'm absolutely whacked. I've spent most of today chasing fish on the surface and got nothing for my efforts. But um, yeah, it's the last evening now and I've got the rods out, I've got a brew in hand and I'm hoping not a great deal will happen tonight. I just want to hear from the big girls, that's all. I uh, had quite a lot of bites on the first night on my right hand rod and then last night most of the action was on my left hand rod. So, you know, that sort of indicates to me typical sort of day ticket water is that uh, after 24 hours of getting a bit of action on one rod, you need to move it. But uh, I've stuck them back out on the spots because I don't want to catch loads, I'd love to finish with a real big enough, but you know, you can always dream, but um, either way it's been a good trip, and I've still got a chance because the rods are in the water, so uh, here's to a good night and a lovely ending. <laughs> bit groggy because I've had one of those nights when everything just came to life. The fish went absolutely crazy. I've caught carp, bream, tench and it's just been chaotic. I've only got one rod in the water at the moment and that particular rod has just been going every single time I put it out there so I'm half expecting it to go in a minute but I don't think there's much that I can say other than when I first came here I was thinking about Morgan's and what an amazing fish it is and how wonderful it would be to catch it and yeah <laughs> I haven't scripted this in any way but down there just by my landing net is the fish known as Morgan's what a truly spectacular fish it is as well and I've never caught it before 
and I couldn't have written a better ending. So let's take a look at this magnificent fish on the bank. There aren't many day ticket carp in the UK that I really want to catch, but this is one of them. Fish known as Morgan's, a truly magnificent fish, and definitely the best fish in Orchid Lake. And a great way to end this month's blog. Perfect.